Many thanks, Adi Shewa. To help drive this home, we're joined by Bolaho Lujade, an economic analyst. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. How do you rate President Tinubu's fiscal policies so far? Has it been fair? Well, I think um, it's, it's early days, um, and he has made certain, he has taken certain very bold steps. Um, my, uh, my wish, as with many Nigerians, that uh, he will be able to take some of those major policies uh, to a logical conclusion. Um, for example, on the fiscal side of things, we have had issues about suspending the Finance Act. So the Finance Act 2023 contains certain items that are perceived to be anti-business. Not perceived, they're actually anti-business. So you, you're not going to say because you want more revenue, you will now kill the businesses that will produce those revenue. So he suspended that Finance Act. It was, it was a step in the right direction. Um, on the fiscal side of things also, it's actually the removal of the subsidy. What that did to the revenue uh, was that the revenue increased significantly. So we saw a situation in which states were sharing uh, an average of about $600 billion, uh, and that moved up to about $900 billion. So um, the, the revenue increased by virtue of the removal of fuel uh, subsidy. Uh, on the physical side. Then more importantly, more fundamental now, is the Presidential Committee on uh, Fiscal and, I've forgotten the total name, but what they were meant to do was to look at the fiscal environment in its entirety, review the taxation-related issue, draft laws, if they need to draft laws, to ensure that we will have a better fiscal environment that will be able to collect taxes without overtaxing people. The issues of double taxation will be addressed. These are very fundamental issues that will help to create the right environment for businesses to thrive. When businesses do well, they will create employment, they will make money, and government will eventually be able to get more revenue in terms of taxes which is uh, the ultimate goal. Uh, so I would say uh, maybe on the scale of 100, on the fiscal side of things, the initial initiatives will be like, um, like 60%. But mm -hmm. we now need to be able to take those initi initiatives to the logical conclusion so that people can begin to see the benefits of those initial steps that have been taken. Uh, the removal of petrol subsidy was said to reduce government spending and further deregulate the oil sector. The government has since saved some amount of cash from this. What other sectors of the economy should this be invested into? Well, um, the, the segment that will be affected the most, for example, uh, in the immediate is the transportation. So, and I've always asked this very fundamental question. What Nigerians need? Is it actually cheap petrol in their tank or they want an efficient transportation system? My answer every time I ask that question has been that what we want is an efficient transportation system, not necessarily cheap fuel to put in our car. As a matter of fact, if there is an efficient transportation system, I might as well drop the car at home. That is what people do in some other parts of the world. Um, a, a popular saying is, is that in a developed yes, society, network, it's, it's not the one in which uh, 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 there are no, in which people put all their cars on the road. Rather, it is the one in which the rich also use the public transportation system. That is the true definition of a developed society. So, some of this money, it would be nice to see it come into the transport system to make it more efficient, especially the public transportation system, in terms of both the infrastructure and all the other support that are required for an effective and efficient transport system. Of course, it would be nice if money from the you know savings was also going into several other areas where people ordinarily will spend their money. Because what we are saying now is that people are spending more to buy fuel. So the disposable income that is available has shrunk. Therefore, if we identify some of those other places where people actually spend their money, 
and we can cushion what they spend this money on, uh, it will be better. A very good example is food. Food inflation has remained a critical driver of our composite inflation figure. If you make food available to people, you will be solving a very important problem that will help to cushion the effect of the pains they might be receiving from other sectors. And uh, the, 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 the government has also said a lot of wonderful things about what it intends to do uh, in, the, in, in the food area. You know, extend, you know, plant, cultivate 500,000 hectares of land, provide seedlings, provide fertility, all sort of things, laudable. But what I'm saying is that even that laudable idea, we must now be able to take it to the logical conclusion. I will give you a very good example. If today is already September, if the agri initiative, if we have started to implement in May, maize or rice that is planted in May, maize planted in, in May, are already ready to eat. So the earlier we go to the market with all those initiatives and begin to implement, the better. At the policy level, the government has done well, but we must not leave those policies stranded. We must begin to implement. Thank you very much, Mr. Lojide, for speaking with us. We appreciate your time. Thanks for having me.